Hey guys, uh, Rick here, back down on the layout. Um, I am in the process of starting a small little project um, and I wanted to show you guys how I did it. Um, not sure if you remember, um, uh, my layout is uh, uh, controlled by an NCE command station and all the items that you're gonna see in this project are NCE products with the exception of a tortoise. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure if this can be done with the Digitrax, at least probably not with the components that I'm using. So I apologize for that. Can't fully test it with any other system other than an NCE system because that's what I got. So now you're wondering what the hell is he up to? Okay, so uh, I think I've shown you before. I, I built a uh, panel to... Uh, how some push buttons uh, to control some of my turnouts uh, on the bottom in my uh, my bottom deck in the yard. Uh, I now want to do uh, make another panel for uh, my switch junction up top um, so that I can uh, simply just push you know push the button and you know turn out the turn. Um, the only problem is before I get building the actual panel, I need to show you how the turnouts are working in order to show you how the push buttons work. So that being said, uh, let me go ahead and get you down here to the workbench and I'll show you the first part of it, which I can do on the workbench because I have those extra parts. Uh, the second half of it, you and I are going to have to climb under the layout so I can show you uh, the second part, because uh, the only part that I have is currently hooked up down there. So I'm going to have to get on my hands and knees and lay down on the floor in order to get the camera up to show you. So hang on a second. We'll get you down to the workbench. Okay, so for my turnouts, I'm using Tortoise switch machines, and I'm using an NCE Switch 8 Mark II. This device made by NCE allows you to hook up eight different tortoises and basically make them addressable. So you're signing, assigning an address to a tortoise. They are very simple to hook up. I've got Two, I got one right now on my bottom deck. I've got another one under switch junction. So a couple things that you need. Now, the, the, the good thing about this um, device is that you can either run it off of track power or you can use an optional 12-volt um, uh, plug to power it. Uh, there's a little switch right here. Uh, that allows you to select whether you're going to do uh, DC or DCC. Uh, so just to, uh, for demonstration purposes, uh, underneath of my layout, I've got a 12 volt um, DC uh, bus. So I've got a wire here uh, connected to that and I'm just gonna plug this in. Right now my switch is set to DC and you're gonna see this thing comes alive. It's got a little uh, digital uh, number pad right here um, that starts up. It begins to count uh, going through its startup process. And then the, when you get these three little lines, it's basically telling you it's powered up, but it's not talking to anything yet because my DCC system is not on. So <clears throat> I'm going to turn on my DCC system and uh, you're going to hear a locomotive in the background. I apologize. And I'm not sure if you can see, but now this little number pad that had three little lines on it is now flashing. That's happening because there are two wires going right here that I just have going back here to switch junction and they are alligator clipped onto a set of uh, track. So right now I've got power to the device and I've got it talking to... Uh, my DCC system. So it is actually recognizing that there is a signal coming back and forth from the command station. If I turn off the track, the DCC, 
uh, you'll notice that this thing just stops where it was before. If I take out the power, you'll see it turns off completely. So now just to demonstrate that with DCC power, I'm gonna flip the switch over to DCC and I'm gonna turn on my layout again and you'll notice this thing will start to power up along with my system. And now you can see the flashing lights letting you know that this board is talking to the command station and it's getting track information back and forth. All right, so why would you use the DCC, or I'm sorry, the DC jack to power your tortoise if you can just do it off of track power? It seems to be a lot simpler, doesn't it? Well, here's the problem. If you decide to power your frog off of your tortoise, what's going to happen is the, uh, the track is powering the board and it's also powering your tortoise. If you got a train going down the track and your um, turnout is not in the right position, and you travel over that turnout with your locomotive, you're most likely going to get a short. That's going to shut down your track. Well, with your track shut down, this device no longer works because everything's at a standstill. But if you're powering this separately through its own power source, and that power source controls your tortoise, then when your track has that short, you can still go in and throw the command to turn that tortoise and it will move and then your train can continue through. So it doesn't do anything while the track is shorted. Hope that makes sense. There's an overview of the product. Got that done. So now, how does it work with a tortoise? So what I did here is I took one of my spare tortoises and I just uh, took uh, two wires, soldered it to the tortoise so that we could just see it go back and forth. So you'll notice down here on the bottom, there are these um, little screw terminals here. Um, they're labeled in pairs, uh, one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm not sure if you can see, but that also says A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, and so on and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two leads coming from my tortoise. I'm going to put one of those uh, stripped wires into the B slot. And I'm going to tighten that down. I'm going to put my other wire into the A slot and I'm going to tighten that down. Now watch when I plug, the, plug this back in, watch what the flag does. So now you know and I'm pretty sure you'd hear that we've got power going to the tortoise and it moved in one direction. So. How do we get this to talk to your NCE system and get it programmed? Well, easy enough. Let's turn on my track here and I'm going to get my controller and put it here. Let's get that powered up. Now, <clears throat> you can see now that my uh, Track is on, the system is on, this thing has gone into flashing mode here, meaning it is talking. And there is a uh, button here on the board that says program output. There's also another button down here that's labeled select output. So what we're going to do is first we're going to select which output we want to program. In this case, we're going to program number one. So I'm going to hit the select output button. And you can see that this starts flashing.
with a number one, letting you know that you have the first output selected. There's also an LED light down here by the screw terminal, letting you know that that's the output that you're programming. Now, to actually program that terminal, when it's flashing number one, it's telling you that there's nothing, there's no number or address associated to that. If there were, it would be flashing that number. So for example, I don't have a turnout labeled 501 on my layout. So we're gonna try and program this turnout to 501. In order to do that, we're going to, now that we have the first terminal selected, I'm gonna hit the program button and you'll notice this starts flashing with the letter P. While that's doing that, I believe you've got 60 seconds to throw a command. You do that simply on your uh, controller here by saying select accessory. I'm gonna say it's 501, because that's the, the uh, turnout that I wanna program. Hit enter. And then it doesn't matter how you throw it, whether you throw it normal or reverse. And I'm just gonna hit number two for reverse. You'll notice the tortoise moves, and now this blinks 501, 501, and now that's programmed. <clears throat> so now you could test it by going back into your controller, hit select accessory, it's already labeled as 501, so I'm just going to hit enter, and since I threw it in reverse the first time, I'm going to throw it normal and you can see the tortoise moves. That's how you program a tortoise. Now all you need to do is hook up any other ones that you want to use. Again, you can use up to eight. Now, on my layout, I have a few uh, crossovers. The way I do it is I take both of those tortoises and I put them into the same pin, and this way it's only taking up one address and one terminal. So anytime I select 501 on my controller, it throws both tortoises. Okay, that is the NCE Switch 8 Mark II. That's only the first part of, I guess, this three panel series. Uh, the second part is actually programming uh, the, uh, the next component which is an NCE mini panel. All right, Rail Riders, so uh, stay tuned. I'll get the next segment set up for you, and uh, we'll continue this journey. And as always, ride these rails together. Thanks for watching.